All right, I'm definitely gonna do this this time. Testing one, two, three, it looks okay. Noise floor check is perfect now. Sorry for the last video, it just it just happens. That's that's why a sound engineer, you know, they go to school, they um, have full-time jobs. So if anyone uh, happens to be a sound engineer listening to this, uh, thank you for the work that you do. I uh, have not uh, <laughs> been uh, using it, obviously. But um, so uh, going to do day three of the review. So we've got 30 new cards today. Um, now notice how there's uh, seven in the review this time. So these are the seven that I consistently screw up on, do the worst on. They're going to be shown back to me now to help me uh, stay on, keep keep working on those. So uh, all the good cards uh, I already have down, but then my worst cards I'm going to have that guaranteed to get right on the test instead of guaranteeing that these will be wrong on the test. So you can see how powerful that is. So no time to waste. Should take about an hour. The commands LSPCI and LSUSB and LSMOD act as front ends to read hardware information stored by the operating system. This kind of information is kept in special files in the directory slash proc and slash sys. There we go, slash proc. Okay, and then same thing, uh, but uh, slash sys. These are the special directories that um, read uh, hardware information stored by the operating system. These directories are mount points to file systems not present in a device partition. So, so that's the other thing to, to remember is this data doesn't come from your, your hard disk partition as it would for things like in boot files, things like, um, you know, your data for a program, things like Etsy system wide configurations. Those are all data in your device partition, your, your hard disk partition. This does not come from that. It comes from um, RAM space used by the kernel to store runtime information and information on running processes. Such file systems are not intended for conventional file storage, so they are called pseudo file systems and only exist when the system is running. Not only that, I'm, I don't think you can create a file in them let's see let's see if you can so um let's go to uh let's let's do this in my lab because that's that's an actual dedicated host uh linux machine and it's not just a virtualization like uh, windows subsystem for linux now let's switch over to proc okay and now let's try to create a file we're gonna do uh, we'll create one named named my first name so we know that there's not one already there we go. So we can't we can't create a file here. If I do by oh um, and then let's do let's do wq ah see so we can't we can't do anything with writing files here even if we do a sudo. So let's try that. So let's do uh, sudo by and let's try to create a file using by. There we go. So test. So uh, test, and then um, wq. Still can't do writing, even though I have sudo. So so why is that the case? Um, if if you don't know enough about Linux, you're just kind of um, you're not in it to win it. You're just kind of knowing enough to get by. This might be very very confusing. Oh, can't touch. Okay, that makes sense to me. So let's do a sudo. This is what you might be like if, you, if you're not in it to win it with Linux. Oh, still can't. So why is that? Well, that's because, you know, where would you write? Where would you create the file? In the RAM? Well, you can't do that. And not only that, you know, it, it's not even, um, you know, this this is um, runtime configuration and information on running processes. So so it's it's this is not a place where you store files you can't even you can't even write to your ram in in that way um so you know it, it's just a a pseudo file system it's not a real file system where you can actually 
uh, write to it. You can only read to it because it has uh, the information in the RAM. But you can't write to uh, RAM. Um, you know, you, you can only write to your disk. RAM does get written to, but it gets written to um, not by the user. And let me verify that quick. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm just going to tell this to the AI. So from what I understand about RAM is you can't write to RAM. Like RAM gets written to for sure, but it gets written to by ways not that a user writes to it. So is this true? Is it possible? Is it true that users cannot write to RAM, but RAM gets written to in other ways? What are the other ways that RAM gets written to? And is there a way for a user to somehow hack these other ways so that the user can write to RAM. So ROM, that's not the case because it's read only. RAM, random access memory, is a type of computer memory that can be read and written to by the processor and other hardware devices. It is used to store data temporarily while the computer is running. Users can write to RAM indirectly by running programs and processes that use RAM to store data. Right. Here are a few ways data gets written to RAM. Running applications. When you run an application, the operating system loads the application's data and instructions into RAM so that the CPU can access it quickly. User input. When you type or move the mouse, right. data from the input devices is stored in RAM. System processes. The operating system and other system processes use RAM to store data and instructions. It is generally not possible for users to write directly to RAM without going through the operating system or a software application. Right. However, there are some low-level programming techniques and debugging tools that can be used to write data directly to specific memory addresses in RAM. These techniques are typically used by software developers and system administrators for debugging and testing purposes. As for hacking, there are exploits that can take advantage of vulnerabilities in software or hardware to manipulate RAM. For example, a buffer overflow exploit can write data to an area of RAM that it is not supposed to have access to. This can allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code or gain unauthorized access to a system. However, these types of exploits are illegal and unethical, and they can be prevented with good software design, security practices, and regular updates. Yeah, uh, so one more question for you is... When you're at a bash prompt in Linux, so you can go to places like slash proc and slash sys, which slash sys, which show you that RAM, you know, it shows you the data in the RAM, but am I correct to say that you can't write to these directories at all? And that in fact, when you're on a bash prompt, these are pseudo file systems slash sys and slash proc and you're not really in any way in interacting with the ram like your only capability in a bash prompt on windows is to run programs that interact with the ram or to interact with the hard disk or to interact with the harm di the hard disk through areas in the file system, such as slash Etsy, such as slash ETC, such as uh, your home directory, you know, and places like this. Is this correct? Yes, you're correct. Slash PROC and slash SYS are pseudo file systems that provide an interface to kernel data structures. They are often used to access information about the system and its processes. While you can read from these directories to gain insights about the system state and configuration, you typically cannot write to them directly to change the contents of RAM. Right, and that's because In Bash or any other shell, your primary means of interacting with RAM are by running programs and processes right. that use RAM to store data. When you execute a command, the operating system loads the command's data and instructions into RAM, and the CPU accesses it from there. For example, you can interact with the hard disk by using commands like ls to list directory contents or cat to display file contents. Similarly, you can interact with the file system by creating, deleting, or moving files and directories. However, these operations are mediated by the operating system, which handles the low-level details of reading and writing data to RAM and disk. So is it accurate in a sense to say that a bash shell on a Linux machine points to, and by points to I mean touches or, or you know, writes to, like points to the hard disk, and it doesn't point to the RAM, so it's like... You can do things in the RAM, but you have to run a program to do that. So, like, is it accurate to say that a bash shell allows you to point to a file system on a partition on the hard disk, but if you want to point to a 
the RAM to writing to the RAM, then instead you have to go through an intermediary, which is running a program. Is that correct? Yes, that's a fairly accurate way to describe it. A bash shell allows you to interact with the file system, which is stored on a hard disk or other storage devices. Right. When you run a command or program from the shell, the operating system loads the necessary data into RAM for processing. However, the shell itself doesn't provide direct access to RAM. Right. If you want to interact with RAM directly, you would need to use specific programming techniques or debugging tools, as I mentioned earlier. So, in essence, you're interacting with the file system and running programs that use RAM, but you're not directly interacting with the RAM itself. Okay, so a, another really clear way is you could think of like the file system as if you're driving a car, like the file system is the steering wheel, the gas and brake pedals, and like the radio stations, the air conditioning, all of that. But the RAM, that's the engine. So like, yes, you need to write to the RAM, like you need to fill the engine with oil and with like antifreeze and you know, with whatever stuff it needs for maintenance. And then, of course, you speed up the engine and you slow it down through the pedals, but you, to drive the car, do not need access to the engine directly. You don't, like, open up the hood and put a screwdriver in the engine in order to start or operate the car in any way but you do have to put the key into the ignition and turn it and move the steering wheel and press the pedal. So is that a good way to think of like the file system versus the RAM is like the RAM is kind of like the engine and the processor as well. You know, it's, it's the stuff under the hood that you don't directly interact with. And thus your bash shell doesn't, isn't, isn't really a part of your bash shell except to have like, information like for example how your car shows you rpms rotations per minute on the dashboard like that would be the equivalent of slash proc and slash sys correct yes yeah that's a great okay. analogy cool the file system and the shell are like the controls and indicators in a car that allow you to interact with the underlying machinery while ram and the cpu are like the engine and other internal components that actually do the work right you don't interact with the engine directly when driving just like you don't interact with ram directly when using a shell Right. Instead, you use the controls and indicators, file system and shell, to instruct the engine and other components what to do. Similarly, exactly. slash PROC and slash SYS are like the dashboard indicators that give you information about exactly. what's happening inside the engine and other internal components. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So I got that filled out. Uh, short answer, this is a slash SYS, but I have a really good understanding of this now. All right. So in general, secure shell servers don't have the same type of key infrastructure that web servers depend on. Most secure shell servers rely on, uh, I'm going to say SSH keys. Uh, actually, I'm going to say host keys because, and these host keys can't, so yeah, so SSH keys, SSH host keys, um, Yeah. So I'm going to edit this card and get get this um this one out of there cuz it's it's just like mucking things up. There we go. So this is better Shakira 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 shell servers. <laughs> I don't know who Shakira is. Isn't that like a pop singer or something? Uh, but in general, secure shell servers don't have the same type of key infrastructure that web servers depend on most shell servers rely on okay yeah ssh didn't get that right so i'm doing it again i think shakira is sorry i i, I don't know where shakira from came from i think it is a yeah it's a colombian i think there was a song that i like really liked I forget which one. I'm way, way off topic. But I remember there was there was one Shakira song that I'm like, I'm like, normally I'm not a huge fan, but I forget what it was because, like, there was one song where I'm just like, wow, this is, like, a really good song. Maybe that's why um, the Shakira file system came to mind because it's just, like, trying to summon that uh, song back into my brain. 
All right, so Blank is a modern file system and services manager. And in case anyone can't tell, no, I did not sleep very well last night. Okay, so Blank is a uh, modern file s modern system and um, services manager with a compatibility layer for the sysv commands and run levels. Blank has a concurrent structure, employs sockets and dbus. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, it's a, it's a system and service manager, um, and it's compatible with uh, sysv. Uh, okay, well that's interesting. Uh, so I mean, there's all kinds of service managers. There's system D. Um, so in recent years, most I'm gonna say system D. Got it. All right, so many Linux installations will utilize a machine identification number generated at install time called the uh, machine uh, bus ID. Uh, so not quite, it's the D-bus machine ID. So it was close, but it wasn't right, so I'm going to do it again. System D is also responsible for triggering and response funding to power related events. Um, so it's A P C I A C P I D I think. Nope, uh got that completely wrong. So it's and what I meant to say is yep, A C P I D I got right um for what for the what I was thinking of, which was what is the main uh uh utility that responds to uh, power related events but this question was asking for slash etsy slash system d so let's read it again with that in mind system d is also responsible for triggering and responding to power related events the system ctl suspend command will put the system in low power mode keeping current data in memory Command system CTL hibernate will copy all memory data to disk so the current state of the system can be recovered after powering it off. The actions associated with such events are defined in the blank. Um, so we know that that is slash etsy slash system D slash login dot login D dot conf. So, so lo login D. So such events. So or in separate files inside the directory slash etsy slash system d slash login d dot conf dot d however this system d feature can only be used when there is no other power manager running in the system like acpid uh daemon the acpid daemon is the main power manager for linux and allows finer adjustments to the actions following power related events like closing the uh, laptop lid, low battery, or battery charging levels. So the answer is slash Etsy slash system D. So got that wrong. Next one in general, um, secure shell servers. So this is SSH host keys. All right, it is common to have a large set of loaded modules so uh, lsmod is the command that shows all currently loaded modules. There we go. There are other ways to get the same effect. Uh, here we go. This is a good one. So single quotes, for instance, work just as well. Um, so so prepending each with a can cause a bash. Yep. And that this is a good one to know. Just have to take my word for it. Um, now, one thing that is is difficult, and I do want to take a moment to talk about. Um, I'm not sure because if I do echo test, it's without quotes, and this is with quotes. I can do so. Also, do this is without quotes. I can also do echo user. And notice how it fills in with the actual user, and then and then notice here how it doesn't uh, use the user. So I'm pr hopefully um, this won't be an issue, but 
I'm pretty sure there was a discrepancy in whether or not it actually echoed things out with quotes. So uh, let's try it uh, on Wassel now. Okay, so that's without quotes. And that's without quotes. So it looks like there, it is, it is very clear. There's really no discrepancy. Um, and the fact, and this is a fact we can see here, um, is that it will use, at least in Ubuntu, um, no matter what you do with Echo, um, it will print it out without quotes, unless, of course, you escape the quotes. But um, if, you, if you just wrap something in quotes, it will not include the quotes. So bash is the right answer, so I get a good on that one. Many Linux installations will utilize a machine identification number generated at install time called the uh, D-Bus Machine ID. D-Bus Machine ID. Okay, so, uh, okay, so here we can see, um, yeah, so this is Echo, um, because we can see the results of that. And then we can see, uh, yep, when we wrap it in single quotes, it's literal, so it's, it's what's there. But when it's in double quotes, it, it calls the variable forward, which is a goodbye. So this is echo. And you'll have to take my word for it. Again, uh, under e NDA, cannot talk about the test. But uh, just a general, you know, you know, to get along with your friends and family. You know, to have, have something to say at Christmas or, or, or the holidays, whatever holiday you celebrate. Maybe get this down, understand this, because it, it just it's just good to know, you know. You just have to take my word for it. Alright, so the configuration files associated with every unit can be found in the blank slash system directory. The command systemctl list dash units dash files lists oh and i do want to go back let me go back so you can hit control z which is pretty cool and go back uh, yeah and i just wanted to make extra sure it it does uh not have quotes so that that's the main thing takeaway uh when you're having uh you know a delightful conversation with friends at a uh, friends and family at a, a, a cherished holiday, the, the most sacred and cherished one you celebrate, make sure that uh, it's clear that you know that uh, the output does not include quotes. Um, otherwise, grandpa, whoever might have a fit. All right, in systems based on system D, the command blank, will show the initialization messages with options dash b dash dash boot dash k or dash dash dmesg um okay so this is system d so i think the answer is we'll show an ah this is journal ctl so j-o-u-r-n-a-l CTL and this is the CTL is kind of the same as system CTL so that's a way you can tell it it belongs to system D so the answer is journal CTL perfect and uh, the the way you know it's journal because it's used for initialization messages all right so just how do we identify the current values for each of our environment variables? One th way is through the env command. Perfect. The configuration files associated with every unit can be found in the uh, blank uh, slash system directory. The command systemctl uh, list um, dash unit dash files lists all available units and shows if they are available if they are enabled to start when the uh, system boots so you might be tempted to, th to think sys for system um, but remember that's a pseudo file system um, it's about the RAM so 
it's just read information about the RAM, but these are configuration files, so you're going to need to write to them uh, likely at some point. So it's definitely not in, in anything like slash proc or slash SYS. I'm going to go with uh, dash Etsy, but, but I, my second choice would be dash boot. But if it's dash boot, I got it wrong. If it's dash, if it's slash Etsy, I got it right. So my answer is slash Etsy. Okay, and the real answer is slash lib slash system D, and that makes sense because um, uh, for slash lib is uh, files uh, associated with specific uh, programs, um, not uh, system-wide uh, files. So um, the answer is slash lib, and we can we can get a, a verification on that with the uh, the file system yeah uh standard um here so let's take a look at what it says for slash lib just to be extra sure all right it looks like it's failing to load so that's a problem um maybe the ai works let's see so what is slash lib Okay, so the AI works. Slash lib is a directory in Unix and Linux file systems that contains essential shared libraries and kernel modules needed by the operating system and the programs in the slash bin and slash spin directories to boot okay. and run the system. Yeah. Shared libraries are collections of code that can be used by multiple programs. So th that's the answer there. Um, looks good. Oh, and it looks like, no, these, these are down. Sometimes my internet has uh, problems, uh, uh, like usually around this time, usually in the morning. I don't know what's going on with that. I could check the logs or try to figure that out, but rebooting my router seems to help. But I don't even need internet for this, so uh, let's just continue it. It's just a problem if I can't sync it, but um, this one I got wrong. All right, so use the blank command to add a new directory to your path. This will not survive a reboot. You can temporarily add a new directory, perhaps one called my files that lives in your home directory to your path using blank path equals uh, this create a simple script in the my files slash directory make it executable and try to run it from a different directory these commands assume you're in your home directory which contains a directory called my files so this is what we do we do touch um, create a script and then we build that script out with the shebang so that we can just run it like this and it knows to use bash. Then we, uh, we're going to fill that script with uh, the command uh, echo hello and it's in, um, yep, so, and then, and then we'll make it uh, executable. So now we run it and it's hello. But to do that, the uh, blank command uh, will add a uh, new directory. Uh, to your to your path here, so I'm gonna do. Oh, this is an interesting one. This is fascinating. I I need to know this. I don't know it. I'll I'll be honest. Yeah, export. I I, I needed to know that because what this does is it uh, adds a, a new directory to your path. Um, yeah. So, and, and to use it, you use export, and then you can redefine your path and, and add more directories to it with this colon syntax. And, and you can even, um, yeah. I don't know why you would do this, because you would just list this twice. Um, oh, you know what? I think I think because maybe this is I guess you would always want your path to contain I guess I guess if you do this and you include it as the first things then there's no there's no worry about like like if you were to to add a new path you would have to add all of the existing paths so you could just add the path one at a time I'm not sure what that's all about, but the, the fact remains that the correct answer is export, and I did not get the correct answer. 
So print the path to the current working directory. That's easy, pwd. What is the difference between blank and env? For our purposes, the main thing is that blank will output all variables and functions. So that's different from env, which does not do that. So uh, what? I I don't know. Set. Uh, let me try that because that, that really took me by surprise. Okay, yeah, there we go. Let's try it on uh, the lab. Yeah, so this, this does all, all variables and functions. And if we do ENV, uh, we get uh, much less output than that. We can count the lines. So WC, 22 lines for ENV. And then for set, quite a few more. <laughs> uh, two uh, orders of magnitude uh, more. I, I believe uh, you can think of it that way. Um, yeah, so you need two more zeros in order to, uh, yeah. So I got that wrong. System D is also responsible for triggering and responding to power related events. Okay, so so the, now this is system D. So the actions associated with such events, power related events, um, are in the file uh, slash Etsy slash system D. Yep, slash etsy slash systemd, and then uh, login.conf or in separate files in s inside the directory logind.conf.d. And then uh, that that's the files for like the commands, but uh, by default there's um, ACP ID on there. So um, that's what will get used. But uh, system D is, is like a backup um, that you can use and the uh, files relevant to, to that to power management for, for system uh, D um, uh, are in login d.com file um, or they can be in, in files inside the directory login d.com dot D. And I did get this right this time. All right, so use the command blank to delete the path variable, um, unset, perfect. So try running a command, sudo what happened, why, exiting your shell, return to originate, typing uh, unset path uh, will erase uh, the current path settings, which is interesting because there's no dollar sign here. Um, okay, try and move for that reason. Okay. Reset your path. Let me let me try that because it's just interesting. So let's do echo path. And let's do unset path. Okay, and then let's do echo path again. Okay, so so it is it is correct. And then I can I can exit. I can come back in, and I can do echo path, and it's reloaded with my new session. So unset. I did get that right though. Okay, so use the um, uh, the uh, source command because you add sources for for it to draw from. Um, so the source command. Oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it, it it hurts me to be so sure of something and at the same time to be so wrong. I think uh, most people can relate to that. Hopefully, although there are people that will just continue to be wrong about stuff and uh this is uh fake news here but uh that's not what this channel is about it's about um learning so uh my answer was sources and the correct answer is export if you do not need a command's full documentation you can quickly get uh basic data about a command using blank okay um oh Okay, so I, I'm gonna say um, dash dash help. Oh, type, okay, shoot. So basic data about a command using type. This example uses type to query four separate commands at once. The results show us that CP 
is a program that so we can see here um, the output of type uh, for CP would be slash bin slash CP and that kill change the state of a running process is a shell built in meaning that it is actually a part of the bash shell itself so the answer is type what is the difference between blank and ENV um, so set all right in general, secure shell servers don't have the same type of key infrastructure that uh, web servers defined on, depend on most Sekel, Sekel Raquel, <laughs> um, most uh, secure shell servers rely on SSH host keys. The blank command that our previous type command traced for us will return nothing but the absolute location of a command. Uh, the absolute location of a command. Um, uh, which? W-H-I-C-H? Got it. As a rule, Linux developers write uh, blank files and distribute them along with the utilities. Ah, uh, man, man files. Yep, there we go. Okay, so besides your location in the file system, you will often want information about the Linux file system you are running. This might include the exact release number of your distribution or the Linux kernel version. system you are running uh i'm gonna go with you name u n a m e got it you will often carefully research the proper usage for a command and successfully run it along with a complicated trail of options and arguments but what happens a few weeks later when you need to run the same command with the same options and argument but cannot remember the details Rather than having to start your research over again from scratch, you will often be able to cover the uh, original command. Now, the answer isn't history because that's that's per session, but uh, using dot bash underscore history. Oh. Wait, what? But it doesn't it doesn't persist. I mean, I guess that's if you if you don't log in and lose the history, but I mean, okay, well, you know what? I got that wrong. Um, and we can see if I if I come to my home lab, which is a device that that is up and running, I do history pipe WC. We do have a thousand lines of history. Um, I think uh, bash underscore history. So if we do a, if we do a um, uh, cat bash underscore history pipe WC, uh, see we got two thousand lines there. So I think I think a um, better answer might be um, bash underscore history because that I think uh, you know holds on to more commands and uh, they persist for longer. Um, now the the most recent I, I think I think it, it, the files updated after a session. So I think what happens is you run uh, yeah, I, I think I think you know it's not gonna have the most recent commands you run, but um, if if the if a, the question was if you come back weeks later, for me, the answer would be bash history instead of just history but we can see history does keep a uh robust record so i think history just is the right answer let you know what let's have a quick conversation with the ai about this because i'm just curious enough about this so um let's do that okay so so I got this question wrong. My answer was dot bash underscore history. Explain to me why this answer 
was wrong and how I can understand and remember the correct answer. Oops. This is a helpful tool for recalling and reusing past commands, especially complex ones with multiple options and arguments. On the other hand, bash underscore history is a file in your home directory that stores your command history. This file is used by the history command to display your past commands. While bash underscore history is indeed the place where your command history is stored, the question specifically asks how you can recover the original command. In practice, you would use the history command to view and recover past commands. Bash underscore history is more of an implementation detail. You wouldn't normally interact with it directly to recover past commands. Okay. So in short, while your answer was closely related to the correct answer, it wasn't quite right because the question was asking for the command you would use, which is history, not the file where the history is stored. Right. So, uh, using, yeah. So use, using, using history. So, 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 okay. So, shoot okay so let me ask you this then what are the differences between dot bash history and the history command like do they contain the same things does one contain more information than the other does one have more information than the other i mean or are they both the same information is there any way dot bash history could be considered the right answer to this question or is it just very clear that the right answer is history. Bash underscore history is a file that stores the command history for a bash session. It is used by the history command to display your past commands. Here are some key differences between the two. Accessibility. The history command is used to display and manipulate the command history within a terminal session, while bash underscore history is a file that can be viewed and edited with any text editor. Persistence. The history command shows the command history for the current terminal session, and it can also access previous commands stored in bash underscore history. The bash underscore history file stores the command history across terminal sessions, so you can access your past commands even after closing and reopening the terminal. Interactivity. The history command provides options for manipulating the command history, such as searching, deleting, and re-executing past commands. Bash underscore history is just a text file and does not provide any interactive features. In the context of the question, the history command is the correct answer because it is the tool that you would use to recover and reuse a past command. Bash underscore history is where the command history is stored, but it is not the tool you would use to interact with the command history. So, in this case, it is clear that the right answer is history. Okay. I mean, it doesn't say tool, but I, I yeah, I agree with that. Got it wrong. Next one is use the something command. So the answer is not sources, not source. Source is not the right. Uh, let's go with source, export. Okay, so the configuration files associated with every unit can be found in the uh, slash Etsy slash system D. Nope, slash lib slash system D. If you do not need a command's full documentation, you can quickly get basic data about a command using uh, type. Uh, and here's the output of type. So this example uses type to query four separate commands at once. The results show us that cp copy is a program that lives in slash bin slash cp and that kill change the state of a running process is a shell built in meaning that it is actually a part of the bash shell itself. So type, got it. Many Linux installations will utilize a machine identification number generated at uh, install time. It is called the d-bus machine ID. d-bus machine ID. However, if a virtual machine is cloned, to be used as a template for other virtual machine installations, a new d-bus machine ID would need to be created to ensure that system resources from the hypervisor get directed to the appropriate guest system. The d-bus machine ID is located at slash var slash lib slash dbus slash machine dash ID 
and is symbolically linked to the slash Etsy slash machine dash ID. So we can go with a good on that one. There are other ways to get the same effect. So pretending escape uh, cause something to and the answer is bash. There we go. And the answer here is echo. So just how do I do we identify the current values for each of our environment variables? One way is through the env command. What is in the blank file? Take a look for yourself. You will see hundreds and hundreds of, so this is dot bash underscore history. There we go. And we can learn about the difference uh, between that and the history command. So in the dot bash underscore history file, you will see hundreds and hundreds of your most recent commands. You might, however, to uh, you might be surprised to find that some of your most recent commands are missing. That is because while well, they are instantly added to the, the dynamic history database, um, the latest additions to your command history will not be written to the dash bash underscore history file until you exit your session. Yeah, so so this this file is a historical record of all the commands you you entered, and um, it, it will not be updated until you are finished entering commands in your current session by leaving the session. So got that one right. You will often carefully research the proper usage for a command and successfully run it along with a complicated trail of options and arguments. So, so the answer for this is history. And that's correct. Use the blank command to add a new directory to your path. This will not survive a uh, reboot. So adding a new directory to the path, um, I'm going to go with uh, export. Got it. Type touch and the three parts of your file name, but this time enclose the name in uh, quotation marks. This time it worked. Yeah, so, so double quotes, quotation marks. Uh, quote, quotation marks. Yeah, it says here, single quotes, yeah, quotation marks, quotation, yeah, quoting marks, yep, perfect. There are other commands that handle compressed files, um, so it's, uh, I'm going to say bzcat, got it right. You know, blank concatenates a file to the standard output. Um, so the, the answer to this is cat, C-A-T. Got it. Print the path to the current working directory. That's an easy one, PWD. Okay, so once more using the my password file uh, from previous exercises, devise a bash command that will select one individual from the main office to win a raffle contest. Okay. So, uh, now this is, um, hmm. okay. So use the SCD command to only print out lines for the main office and then a blank command sequence to retrieve the first name of each user. So I'm going to go with cut. Got it. If only the start or end of a file needs to be reviewed, there are other methods available. The command blank is used to read the first 10. So this is head, H-E-A-D, all in lowercase. Got it. You can pipe the output of a program uh, to, to the program less, L-E-S-S. -S. Got it. 
We will use blank as an example, and later you can try with other commands. So blank names, so this looks like an MD5 uh, hash. So MD, MD5 sum. MD5 sum. To help illustrate the number of lines displayed, we can pipe the output of the head command to the number command. Uh, nope, uh, that is wrong. It's NL, which is good because I need to know that one. <laughs> so I'm glad I got it wrong because so, so we can do, um, so like I'm working on some volunteer work here. Um, so we can go into one of these. Uh, let's go to the database file and uh, let's print out the readme. And then we'll number the lines. So LN. So sorry, NL. There we go. And now we've got each line in the README file uh, with a with a number. The octal dump um, OD command is used uh, for debugging applications and various files. There we go. OD. Use the blank command to delete the path uh, variable. Uh, unset U N S E T. Got it. Merge lines of files. Uh, write lines consisting of the sequentially uh, uh, corresponding lines from each file, separated by tabs, to standard output. Uh, I'm going to say split. Paste is, is the correct answer. Most of what we can do with grep, we can also do with blank. Uh, so the answer is SED. All right. So uh, we're going to illustrate a point. So, uh, so, so this, is, this is much longer than we, we saw before. Um, so my answer is going to be SHA256 sum. SHA256 sum. Got it. All right, so the blank command that our previous type command traced for us will return nothing but the absolute location of a command. Um, so which, W-H-I-C-H. Perfect. Yeah, so you can use the type command. Um, so let's do that. Type on CD. Okay, type on uh, apt. So there we go. So And then we can do which on user bin apt uh, oh, okay. I, I'm a little bit uh, confused by this. Return nothing but the absolute. Okay. Uh, I, I want to ask the AI about this quick because I'm kind of confused. So the blank command that our previous command type traced for us. So what, what does it mean that the type command command traced the which command can you please show me an example also does the type command show more than just the absolute location of a command why is which necessary if you can get the same info and more with type? The type command in Unix-like operating systems is used to display information about command type. It tells you how a command would be interpreted if used as a command name. It can show you if a command is a built-in shell command, an alias, a function, or an external command, 
and where the external command is located. For example, the above command might output something like, and if you run, you might see something like, or, the which command, on the other hand, only returns the path of the executable associated with a given command. For example, this might output, while type can provide more information than which, including whether a command is a built-in, an alias, or a function, which has the advantage of being simpler and more focused. It only returns the path of the executable, without any additional information, yeah. which can be useful okay. in scripts Perfect. or when you only need to know the location of a command. Also, which works across different shells, while type is a built-in command in bash and may not be available in other shells. Got it. So, there's, there's kind of redundancy, um, you know, multiple ways to do the same thing. That's, that's fair. So, I got that one. Oh, I can't remember. Um, I think I got it right. Okay, so what is the difference between set and env? So, set is more verbose. Got it. To help illustrate the number of lines displayed, we can pipe the output of the head command to the uh, nl command. Stands for number lines. Besides your location in the file system, you will often want information about the Linux system you are running. This might include the exact release number of your distribution or the kernel version that is currently loaded the blank tool is what you are after here uh... ah you name u n a m e perfect the configuration files associated with every unit can be found in the uh i'm gonna go with um now, 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 the, again, okay, so these are associated with a unit. So these are associated with a specific program. So I know that's uh, slash lib. So I'm going to go with slash lib slash system D. Perfect. As a rule, Linux developers write blank files, uh, man files, M A N. Merge lines of files, so this is a paste. I remember it. So paste writes lines uh, consisting of the sequentially corresponding lines from each file, separated by tabs to standard output. So let me let me try paste because I've never really used paste. So uh, let's let's paste the readme. Uh, cat readme. What's the difference between catting it and pasting it? Looks the same. I guess I guess what you could do is you could um, merge it. So so like we could we could if we do paste, readme, and then uh, Docker uh, build sh. Then um, instead of instead of printing them out, yeah, it'll just it'll just print them together. Um, so if we were to do cat instead, it would print one after another. If we would do paste, then it would, it would like jumble them together in a way, I guess. I don't know. I'm kind of confused. But the correct answer is paste. Used for calculating the SHA-512 a hash value of a file also used to verify a file against an existing hash value to ensure the file's integrity. So the question is, the answer is SHA-512 SUM, S-U-M. All right, so blank command is used to blank a file, arranging the records in a particular order. By default, the blank command blanks file, assuming Oh, I, I, I know this one. Uh, I'm going to go with sort. Got it. So you promised yourself that you would read a classic book 100 lines a day, and you decided to start with Mariner and Mystic. Devise a command using blank. Uh... I'm going to say uh, cut. Nope, the answer is split. 
all right so now we just got the review so um we're almost at the hour mark yeah so a little bit longer we got more cards though if you do not need and i was not on topic at all <laughs> i was talking about shakira songs if you do not need a commands full documentation you can quickly get basic data about a command using blank uh type got it you will often carefully research for the, the proper usage for a command and successfully run it along with a complicated trail so so you, you can you can find that that um, commands that you ran previously using the command history use the blank command to add so uh, this one I'm gonna go with export type touch and the three parts of your file name in uh, quoting marks okay so devise a command using split that will split the book into sections of 100 lines each you know cat cat um so ah uh, now this one is cut and you can use a, a field designator and then you can pick uh which which field um after it's been cut you want to display What is in the blank file? Take a look here yourself. You will see, so this is dot bash underscore history. There are other commands that can handle uh, compressed files. So for example, one of them is bzcat. And that's for bzip files. Uh, so we will use, we can tell this is a smaller hash and we can tell that uh, we're using message digest so the answer is md5 sum if only the start or end of a file needs to be reviewed there are other methods available the command uh, head h e a d you can pipe the output to the program blank so the results will be paginated l e s s less Most of what we can do with grep, we can also do with sed. The octal dump od command, there we go. Here's an example. So this is a much longer one. Um, I'm going to go, yep, and we can see it, it, it calculates a SHA-256 checksum. So the answer is SHA-256 SUM. Okay, so to help illustrate the number of lines you use nl number lines nl got it merge lines of files write lines consisting of sequentially corresponding lines from each file separated by tabs to standard output so th this is a uh, paste okay so used for calculating the sha 512 hash value of a file also used to verify a file I guess an existing hash value to ensure a file's integrity. So, uh, use for case, uh, interesting. Uh, so, yep, so it's, it's SHA 512 sum. Got it. All right, so blank command is used to blank a file. Um, okay, so contents are. Scared. I'm going to go with uh, sort. So it's used to sort a file, arranging the records in particular order. All right, so devise a command using blank, uh, using split. That will separate this book into sections of 100. Got it. All right, I'm done. And uh, yep, it took about an hour this time. I, I was way off topic. I uh, didn't sleep too well last night, so my mind kind of wandered a bit. Um, and I got uh, seven extra cards in the review. So still going to take about an hour uh, every time I do it. Um, so uh, that's it for this one. And stay tuned for tomorrow where I uh, spend another hour. Um, and then what's that, day four? So like I'm already more than halfway through. Um, so uh, good times coming.